Yeah, I mean, we just were in meet and greet, and uh, a guy said, hey, man, I appreciate you for your music. I'm a part of Teen Challenge, and, you know, I'm a recovering addict, and your music has been a positive influence on me to help me get through that. And that's the stuff you hope for. You hope that your music is impacting and changing lives. My mission is the same, but I think some of my methodology has changed. And I think more than ever, um, I've learned to consider a broader audience while I create. Um, you know, and I think that's just come through like living more life, building more relationships, like understanding other perspectives more. I think um, my faith has been growing and changing and evolving as it should. You know, I think uh, this project for me, um, I was willing to step into some more of the uncomfortable conversations or taboo conversations. You know what I mean? And I think that's part of a maturing faith is an ability to stand between, uh, like just leaving black and white idealism and, be and being able to step into tension and wrestle with issues and to say, I thought I was right and I wasn't right, you know? Or to admit that you're wrong, or to say that your one ideology or perspective on doing something might be wrong or not the only way, you know? Welcome to uncomfortable, tension-filled conversations, and like, I guess more than ever, I've been learning to embrace that. For a long time, I was just very like spiritually arrogant, and I guess what, that, what I mean by that is like, you read a bunch of books, you hear a bunch of sermons, and then you think you got Christianity figured out because it's in a checklist or in a book and then you start living it out and you start realizing that this is much harder to live out and to implement than I read in the textbook <laughs> you know what I'm saying then you run into all kinds of sticky and like frustrating issues that cause you to like learn how to live out your faith and not just in like an ideal sense but like in real life like when Jesus says stuff like be in the world and not be of it what does that mean? There's no like examples of that. He just gives us that principle and then we have to go figure it out. And that's sticky and that's messy. You know why? Because as you're trying to figure that out, you're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna fail. You know what I mean? You're gonna capitulate to one side. You'll end up being very obnoxious or you'll be very cowardly. You know, and, and we have a tendency in Christendom to represent Christianity that way very obnoxious or very cowardly and I've been trying to learn what is the tension to not do either of those but to walk with boldness and with humility uh, you know to, to live out my faith and those are those are tensions that you don't have figured out in one day the things I'm wrestling through the older I get for me to live unashamed is to unapologetically admit you know my need for Jesus uh, I'm unashamed of that to, to, to say that I'm in need of him and, and desperate for growth uh, in my relationship with him. Um, I think that banner has been waved unashamed has equaled brash and obnoxious. And that's not what it means to be unashamed. That just means you're brash and obnoxious about what you believe. I think there's, a, and I think that's, to be honest, that's some of like the banner that I think a lot of people who associate with Unashamed like thought we were carrying early on because our music early on in a lot of ways was so aggressive and like and boisterous that that the idea of Unashamed and that became synonymous um, you know and it's like the analogy that propaganda gave was great today you know like when, when you first become a Christian, there's like this radical excitement about like, wow, I've found a new path in life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've, I feel like I've found the truth. And out of our excitement, our zeal, sometimes we lack wisdom and how to wield it. And those are exciting times and, and they're complex times. It's like a relationship too. When you first meet that girl, you guys are like goo goo about each other. You're crazy. Ah, the, the sparks are flying, you know. And then a, you, in a few years into marriage, the flame is still there if there's a healthy relationship, but it's much deeper than the sparks now. It's actually more mature. And even though you're not laying up in bed till 4 a.m., like talking about, oh, I love this about you, I love that about you. The love is still just as deep, but it's actually deeper. It's it's more mature. It has it's taken on different shape. 
Uh, and I think people uh, who want to see the unashamed movement continue are sometimes taken aback by there not being that like sparks flying at first sight love dating kind of faith uh, spewing through our music because our my relationship with Jesus is still just as strong and deeper you know what I'm saying and my mission to to know Jesus enjoy him and make him known to the world is just the same as it was then it just looks different now because I'm older and I've matured uh, in some ways and the way I want to express my relationship with him is just different you know and it's not wrong um, you know I think my relationship with Jesus has informed everything about my life at one point early on I was um, I just wanted to regurgitate everything that I had learned and teach everyone else that's the spiritual arrogance kind of that I was talking about uh, but now like having time to have sat with those ideas and work them into my life and into my heart and into my mind they start to come out in more organic ways and the way I think about life sex marriage money relationships time commitments like the gospel is infused into my life and it's not just a banner I'm waving now uh, it's it's in my being uh, and you know I talked to you about this too is like when people say I don't hear the gospel in your music that's an indictment against you not an indictment against me you know and I think I was clear to say like the gospel is informing all of my music so if you don't hear it I question your uh, depth of understanding of what the gospel is.